So our story continues after Bardock has just accepted his grandson Goten's offer to a sparring session, only to learn how utterly outmatched he was. And on top of that, the shocking reveal that his young grandson was also a Super Saiyan already, leaving Bardock muttering, Am I seeing this right? That yellow hair, the green eyes, and this insane power! Even my grandson is a Super Saiyan before me! What has Kakarot been feeding these kids? Meanwhile, the power of Goten is on full display as his aura continues to flux, and his blonde hair and emerald green eyes stare directly into the face of Grandfather Bardock. He says with a smile, Come on, Grandpa! What's the hold up? Go super already! Meanwhile, Bardock's face continues to turn to shame as he reflects on his past, commenting, This! This is just not acceptable! How embarrassing! I'm the head of the household for God's sake! I was one of the strongest in the old Saiyan army! A combat leader! I was almost an elite! Countless foes defeated! Countless planets conquered! And now, I'm reduced to fearing the power of a toddler?! With his embarrassment compounding, Bardock face palms and continues, I could only imagine if Fasha or Shugesh could see me like this. They'd have a field day. They would never let me hear the end of it. Safe to say, those two aren't getting revived now. With himself now composed again, Bardock gets serious once again and inquires, Listen, brat. I mean, listen, Goten. Clearly becoming the legendary Super Saiyan is not as rare or difficult as we once thought back on planet Vegeta. For God's sake, you're living proof of it! A child whose voice hasn't even dropped yet, somehow making a mockery of the Saiyans of legend. Just tell me, how do I do this too, so I can at least keep up with the rest of you? It was bad enough being surpassed so greatly by Kakarot, but the same cannot be true with you. Goten, however, looks back with a puzzled face as he just replies, Huh? Grandpa? You can't turn into a Super Saiyan. You must be forgetting things in your old age, Gramps. You told me you're the one who taught Dad everything he knows. Are you lying? Bardock now almost caught out with an embarrassed face full of blush, then responds, Uh, oh yeah! No, no, of course I wasn't lying, kid! It's just, the, uh, the gravity on this planet is different to what I'm used to. And, and I've been dead for a long time. Over 30 years. Yeah, I'm just a little rusty of the whole transformation business. I'd appreciate if you'd just give me a little refresher, that's all. Come on, cut me some slack, kid. Goten now having powered down back to base just replies, a refresher? That's weird. No one else forgot how to transform. Not even Gohan. And he never trains anymore. Are you sure you're already a Super Saiyan Grandpa? It's okay if you aren't. Really? But Bardock being the quick thinking liar he is, immediately responds, <laughs> Nonsense! You need to learn to respect your elders, kid. I'm your father's dad. Everything he is, is just a weaker copy of me. I don't know about Gohan, but my Super Saiyan transformation was so powerful that, uh, it's harder to transform into. That's all. A little training, and I'll be there in no time. Just pretend you're trying to make me become a Super Saiyan for the first time. Goten, oblivious to any of the lies, however, just continues smiling excitedly and responds, Oh, okay, Grandpa. Sure, no problem. Then when you become a Super Saiyan again, we can spar some more, right? Which Bardock just reluctantly then nods back to. 
Goten then continues now pointing ahead. Hey, let's head over there. I know a perfect spot for training. It's where me and Gohan used to train for the World Martial Arts Tournament. Bardock, who is now confused at the mention of a tournament, then just looks back with a smile saying, Sure, whatever you want. Lead the way, kid. Just make sure you know what you're doing, alright? I haven't come out here to waste time. No problem, Grandpa. You'll be a Super Saiyan again in no time. So, with that, the pair then fly off in the direction of a familiar set of mountains. Meanwhile, back at the home of Goku and Chi Chi, the rest of the family continue to bond with each other, and we rejoin Raditz and Gohan, who after their earlier family spat, now both look at Gohan's phone together, where we see an image of Baby Pan and Videl. Gohan explains, Uncle Raditz, have a look at this. Here's my wife Videl. I met her at high school, and together not too long ago, we had our first child, Pan. She's a real handful, haha. <laughs> but that'll probably be the same genes in her, I guess. Raditz looks at the picture of Pan with a smile and says, I see. She looks just like mother. She has the same eyes. Our same genes truly stick on through the generations I see. And your wife looks like a fine woman, Gohan. Hey, I don't know of this high school you speak of, but now I'm alive, I should settle down like Kakarot has. Hopefully, you can take me to this place where you met your wife so I too can find my own Earth Bride, hmm? What do you say? Gohan, realizing the inappropriateness of what Raditz just said, looks back awkwardly, however, realizing what Uncle Raditz is unknowingly implying, and replies, Uh, Uncle Raditz? I don't think you should be hanging around high schools at your age. At least, that's not what we do down on Earth. Give me a few days, and I'm sure I'll find somewhere more suited to you, don't worry. <laughs> and with a puzzled and oblivious look, Raditz looks back and replies, Uh, sure. If you say so, Gohan. Following this, Gohan then suddenly feels a soft tap on his back. He turns around to see who it is, and there standing behind him, is none other than his grandmother, Gine, with a warm smile who begins saying, Hey there, we haven't met yet, so you're my other grandson. Gohan, was it? You made quite the entrance there, almost killing my little Raditz. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure he would have deserved it. He was always a bit of a handful. My name is Gine, I'm your grandmother and I was revived by Kakarot earlier today, along with your grandfather, Bardock. That old man who looks just like your dad. <laughs> Gohan, with a little blush on his face from the shock of seeing his grandmother for the first time and taking all this information in, thinks in his head, Wow, so this is my grandmother. She's so pretty. She looks younger than mum. Dad never really mentioned his parents while I was growing up, but I guess I never asked. Master Roshi and the Ox King were as much as I ever got when it came to grandparents. To think, this is my grandmother. Before then saying, <laughs> Sorry about that, me and Uncle Raditz have a bit of a complex history. I had no idea Dad was going to do that. I can't believe he never mentioned you before. But it's so nice to meet you finally, Grandma. Before then attempting to outstretch his hand for a handshake. As he does this though, he is met with Gine looking down puzzled at Gohan's overly courteous greeting. Before then instantly grabbing Gohan for a big hug yelling, Oh you, I'm your family. A handshake is far too formal for your old gran. I can tell Kakra and Chi Chi raised you well. You're so big and strong, and you look so much like my older brother. <laughs> Gohan understandably has his interest piqued on hearing this, and steps back from Gine and asks, Wait, your brother? 
So I have a great uncle too! Wow! I never realised I had so many family members! This is actually really interesting! <laughs> For the longest time, it's just been me, mum, dad and Goten. If you don't mind, could you tell me more about him? To which Gine now happy that her grandson wants to know more about his Saiyan heritage, then says, Of course, Gohan. I know if he was still here, he'd have loved to have spoken to you. His name was Garland, and he was so smart. Bardock used to always be jealous. <laughs> but one thing first, let's go into the kitchen and I'll tell you more about him over some food. I'm starting to get hungry again. <laughs> With Gohan just thinking to himself in his head. <laughs> so this is where dad got his appetite from. And following this, the two then walk back together into the kitchen. With Gine's hand on the back of her grandson, pushing him excitedly. Meanwhile, now sitting down, Raditz is still holding the phone of Gohan. And after seeing his mother and nephew leave, continues to look deeply again at the picture of Videl and Pan, beginning to say, Pan, the daughter of Gohan, the granddaughter of Kakarot, a Saiyan mixed of human DNA. Even my own nephew has started an entire family and spawned a new generation of his father's bloodline. Meanwhile, decades later, and there isn't anyone to carry on my name and story. At least not that mother and father know about yet. For a moment, Raditz stares again at his phone, this time in silence, thinking and remembering a certain someone from the past, before he then looks into the sky as if in deep thought and then continues, I don't know what the right thing to do is. To see her again after all these years, or to leave her alone to get on with her life. She's not heard a word from me for over two decades now. She's probably moved on by now, surely. But inside, I know I still need to see him, at least. I need to see my son. <laughs> The scene then shifts back to Goten and Bardock, who are in an open field. Bardock, who seems unimpressed with his arms folded, looks around and questions Goten. Huh, this is where you and your brother trained? Doesn't seem very special. Hardly the place to unlock a legendary form. Anyway, so how do I become a Super Saiyan? Don't forget, that's why I came here, kid. Not to be a replacement Gohan for you. Goten, however, with a smile, then immediately begins picking up rocks from the ground, stuffing them comedically into his gi, before replying excitedly, Well, when me and Gohan used to train, we first used to collect all the little rocks over here. We have a fun game we play where we need to dodge all the rocks, and whoever lasts the longest wins. Gohan said it builds reactions or something, but I just think it's really fun. We got way stronger after playing this every day. Bardock with an unimpressed look on his face just responds, A game? This is how you expect me to ascend? Huh. Whatever, you're the boss I guess. At the very least this will warm me up a bit. I'm used to dodging the speeding bullets and energy beams of soldiers all throughout the galaxy. So this will be child's play, literally. <laughs> okay, Goten, give it your best shot. I may not be a Super Saiyan, but I've still got my speed. One rock, two rocks or three. Hell, throw the whole bag at me at once and I'll show you what a real Saiyan can do. <laughs> And Goten, still with that massive smile, then lifts his giant pile of rocks from the base and transitions into position, getting ready to throw before replying. Uh-huh, Grandpa. Gohan said the same too. But we'll see. 
Get ready now. Here I come in three, two, one, go! Instantly, Gojo then rapidly throws multiple rocks like a machine, each one traveling at insane speeds, breaking the sound barrier, aimed perfectly right towards Bardock. <gasps> Bardock's face is completely shocked as he realizes just how fast the rocks are coming and how abundant in quantity, yelling out, w Wait a minute! One at a time, kiddo! Rocks crash all around Bardock, creating small but alarmingly deep craters, which Bardock notices instantly and reacts with a face of true fear for his life as he remarks, Is... is this kid for real? If I get hit by one of those, I could be back in hell before I know it! How strong have you made Goten in this story, Arge? But before Bardock can say any more, he realizes point blank just how close the next few rocks are to him, having traveled again at supersonic speeds. He quickly thinks to himself, No! There's... there's too many of them! I won't be able to dodge in time! And so he tries his best to dodge them, but it's a pointless effort, as three rocks manage to hit him to devastating results. <laughs> Skidding across the floor in an attempt to get out of the way of the other rocks, Bardock is left damaged, far more than what was expected from a simple game. He comments, Grrr, That hurts like hell! I feel like he's throwing swords! Let me have a look at the damage. Grrr, I'm bleeding! Suddenly, Bardock looks down and takes notice of just how severe his injuries are. His face is completely stunned as he notes, This is ridiculous! He's throwing with such force, even these rocks on this weak planet are damaging! This is beyond the power of a Saiyan! These half-breeds are truly insane! Eventually, however, Bardock notices that things are strangely quiet too quiet. Bardock looks up to try and find Goten, but finds nothing. He's momentarily alarmed as Goten has seemingly disappeared, saying, Huh? Where did that brat go now? This is dangerous. If he throws from a blind spot, we may actually be done for. But soon enough, a voice from right behind Bardock then says, I'm right here, Grandpa. Ready for round two? alarming Bardock in the process. A wave of fear rushes over him as he mutters, N no not again! I can't dodge him at this distance! I need to create some space! I'm out of here! And people causing Bardock to fly off at top speed, as Goten continues to throw devastating mini bombs at Bardock, missing him just barely each time. The assault continues as Bardock flies around, just trying to avoid being hit as if his life depends on it, while Goten obliviously just carries on throwing his seemingly never-ending stash of rocks without a care in the world. Who almost got you there, Grandpa. This is so much fun! <laughs> this kid! This isn't a game anymore! From one end of the field to the other, Bardock flies, increasingly getting angry and angrier, while Goten continues with an unlimited supply of energy, almost like a crazed android. Eventually, Bardock using his speed and maneuverability loses Goten briefly, finding a small cave to hide him. He walks inside and immediately slams the wall saying, Looks like I got away. I'll be safe in here for a bit while I figure out what I can do! Damn it, this is embarrassing! Kakarot and the rest of the Saiyans on this planet are complete monsters! I just need to find a way to predict the movements of his throws! Let me think... But again, before Bodok can even begin formulating a plan, at the entrance of the cave stands the cheekily smiling Goten who yells, Oh, so there you are, Grandpa! Not sure why you came in here. There's barely any room to dodge. 
I thought you said you were trying to make some space. Oh, don't tell me. You're planning on using that ultra instinct thing you taught dad, right? I can't wait. Bardock, however, with a fear-stricken space, paralyzed and confused at the sight of Goten, so quickly just thinks, Ultra what now? I don't know what he's blabbing about, but he's right. I'm such an idiot. I've ended up putting myself in the worst possible position. A dead end in a tight cave. This is it. This is really it. I'm going to die by rocks at the hands of my little grandson. The Saiyans back in hell can never hear about this. I'll just have to lie and say Frieza took me out again. Meanwhile, Goten, who is now bored of waiting, prepares his rocks once more and readies his position. Here comes. Let's see you dodge these. Immediately then barraging Bardock like never before. But this time, with nowhere to hide, all that Bardock can do in response is guard with everything he has, being damaged with every hit. Just as expected. Eventually, Bardock, while covering himself, closes his eyes to control the pain, but can't help the hit to his same pride as he thinks to himself, This is too much! I can't take this much longer! I can't let it end like this! I can't be the weakest in this damn family! I am Bardock the Combat Leader! Saying this, Bardock's eyes then suddenly open wide, still inside his covering arms, but this time coloured a strange but familiar shade of green. <laughs> Without warning and with a ferocious roar, Bardock yells out as his black hair spikes up and an aura blasts from him that instantly destroys all of the incoming rocks. The increase in power and aura proves so great that even Goten is pushed back as he too is taken by surprise. Whoa! Grandpa! <laughs> His hair now even more spiked up and shifting in color now from black to blonde, Bardock's pupils disappear as he undergoes an intense transformation. A transformation so powerful, soon the entire cave blows up from being unable to contain the amount of ki Bardock now emanates. But left behind in the debris and rubble, finally, Super Saiyan Bardock is born, who can just about barely control his newfound power. I am Bardock, the legendary Super Saiyan! Meanwhile, on the ground, Goten, who has been left floored, just looks on at his grandfather in awe, with this actually being the first time he'd seen such a dramatic Super Saiyan transformation. He mutters, Grandpa? Is that you? Are you... are you okay? <laughs> with a cold and instant look, Bardock shifts his gaze at Goten with his green eyes and replies, Who else would it be, kid? Which immediately then puts the young Goten at ease as he yells in excitement, Oh wow, Grandpa! It is you! You look awesome! I knew you'd remember how to do it. It's been a while since I saw what a Super Saiyan looks like from the outside. You look so much like Dad! Bardock on hearing this, then looks at a nearby body of water and sees his own reflection. He too is left momentarily shocked as he thinks, Huh? The brat wasn't kidding. This is just like when Kakarot transformed. I wonder if I've got the same level of power though. And with a new sense of confidence, Bardock begins to smile as he continues, Haha, <laughs> well, it looks like your training worked out perfectly in the end, kid. I gotta tell you, you sure have an arm on you. I feel incredible. So this is how it feels to be a Super Saiyan. 
Wait, I mean, uh, so this is how it feels on Earth to be a Super Saiyan. Slightly different, you know, gravity and stuff like that. But hey, Goten, you know with all this power, I think I need a way of testing it and breaking myself in. For once, this might be a fair fight now. Ready for the real sparring to begin? Immediately then powering up and getting into fighting styles. To which, Goten then reciprocates. I was thinking the same. You got it, Gramps. We'll call this round two. Super Saiyan or not, I'm not losing. So our story continues after Raditz revealed shockingly last episode the existence of his son. Having contemplated for almost an hour now, Raditz who stayed sitting in his chair, staring into Gohan's phone, finally stands up and proclaims, That's it! I know better than anyone at this point. Life is precious and I've only got one. I can't waste this second chance I've been given. God knows how long it will even last knowing my luck. If my son is still alive and out there, I can't sit by and let him fall behind Kakarot and his brats. I am Raditz after all, the older brother, a goddamn Super Saiyan. Kakarot may be as strong as a god now, but I was far stronger than him when I conceived my child than when he had Gohan. So there's no telling what kind of incredible power my offspring would have by now. Clearly, something is in the water here to make these half-breeds grow so incredibly strong. My progeny will be no different. By my honor, someone will carry on my namesake, my son, and they will surpass Kakarot's children one day. I'll make sure of it. Raditz, however, after his impassioned speech, then looks around and asks, But where's Dad? Before I go, I should probably get some advice. To be honest, I have no idea how I'd even interact with my own child. It's been over 20 years. It's not like meeting him as a kid. He'd be a grown man by now. Grr. Bardock, where are you? Don't tell me he still hasn't come back from sparring Goten. Tch, typical. This family is full of fight obsessed freaks. As Raditz continues his search, even looking out the front door and disappointingly realizing that Bodok is nowhere to be found, coming down the stairs yawning is a tired Goku who says, Oh, ah, oh, a good nap after a big meal is one of the best things you could ever do, big bro. You should try it out, Raditz. You can sleep in Gohan's old room. He doesn't use it anymore. <gasps> a triggered Raditz, however, looks around in embarrassment as he soon realizes without Bardock, Goku is the next best thing, muttering to himself, Damn it! Looks like if Dad's really gone, the only person left to go to for advice is Kakarot! <laughs> Imagine getting advice from a glorified baboon! From the stories I've heard at the dinner table, this fool knows less about this world than even I do. He hasn't even changed a bit since the day I met him. I can only hope the imbecile is more wise in fatherhood than everything else he's shown me so far. Following this, Raditz then calls out to Goku with a tempered look saying, Hey Kakarot, never mind the napping. I have something I need to talk to you about. Something unfortunately, only you can help me with. Now, it's important you keep this under wraps for now as I still don't know what I'll be doing. But I need some advice on fatherhood and- What? Raditz, you have a kid? Wow, you've gotta be kidding. You never struck me as good with children. Instantly reacting in shock, forcing Raditz to quickly put his finger to his mouth to quiet down Kakarot with immediate urgency. Shush, Kakarot! This is exactly why I didn't want to do this! For God's sake, I 
can already tell this is a bad idea! Just kill me already! Telling this idiot is only going to make this ten times harder! Eventually though, things calm down and Goku and Raditz sit down together. Where a just short of embarrassed Raditz begins reluctantly explaining... Listen Kakarot! Yes, I have a son! On Earth! It happened a long time ago! When I first came to see you all those years ago. But you cannot be shouting it to the high heavens! I don't want the whole world to know. Mother would have a heart attack, you know. I hadn't mentioned anything about it until now. Besides, right now, I still don't even know if I'm going to go through with meeting him. A puzzled Goku, however, just questions further. Wow, on Earth, huh? So he's been here this whole time. One thing I don't get, though, is how, though? Like when? I thought when you came here, you only had the goal of recruiting me to join you, Nappa and Vegeta. I guess I just thought you headed straight here from when you landed. With Goku's face now changing to a wink as he continues, I didn't know you came here for a little love and romance too. Mixing business and pleasure, eh Raditz? You old dog. <laughs> <laughs> Nudging a now thoroughly red and embarrassed Raditz as the older brother replies, Kakarot! No! It was not like that! I didn't plan anything. It, it just happened so quickly and randomly. I would never come here for any purpose than to complete my mission. That is the same way. It all started when I left the ship. For one, I didn't immediately head to you. It took me some time to even know where you were. When I first landed, for instance, I first met with a strange human who attacked me. A farmer, with a shotgun if I remember correctly. And only after dealing with him did I set course to try and find you. But even then, the first power level I detected didn't even turn out to be yours. Instead, it was a strange green man. But on the way to him, I did eventually realize just how long it had been since I'd last eaten. After all, the trip to Earth took entire days, and there's no food on that ship. Eventually, while flying, I did spot a village of some kind, filled with strange people, brown skinned, but wearing extremely primitive clothing. They look different to the Earthlings I've seen with you. But one thing was for sure, the greenery was bountiful with trees, full of fruit. So naturally, I flew down as soon as my stomach forced me to. As I landed, however, the village people immediately took notice as I asked politely, Hey there, I'm looking for some food. Bring me some immediately. But of course, they soon ran as fast as they could in fear. Tch, you damn cowards! If you aren't going to play ball and feed me, allow me to feed you a double Sunday instead! Uh, huh? But just before I blew their little settlement to the next dimension, a soft hand grabbed my other arm. I looked down, and a mysterious woman was standing right next to me with no fear. A beautiful woman, Kakarot. Brown skinned, with the most mesmerizing yellow eyes I'd ever seen. Nothing like the women of our planet. And no offense, nothing like the other women I've seen here either. Before long, we simply hit it off. She wasn't like the other Earthlings. There wasn't a glimpse of hesitation in her words or movements. It was almost like she already knew me from another lifetime. My strange appearance fascinated her more than anything as we carried on speaking. Even I was caught in a trance just staring into her intense golden eyes, where I soon learned her name was Narali, a name indigenous to her village it seemed. Eventually, she would lead me away from the other villagers, 
telling me to come with her if I wanted some real food and something sweet to eat. And of course, me being hungry and also infatuated with her, I just followed. What else was a starving Saiyan to do? Little did I know though, where she ended up taking me was her bedroom. I still remember asking her, Uh, wait a minute, I don't smell any food here. But she continued to persuade me to keep coming in, promising a large feast. And before we knew it, one thing led to another, and I ended up eating something very different to food. My first time, and I didn't regret it, I almost felt like I was in love. But I knew all the time I had to leave. You were still my target, Kakarot. And if I failed Vegeta, he would have annihilated me, as well as everyone on this planet, including Narali. So as soon as I could, without a word of goodbye, I left, heading towards the green man thinking he was you. And the rest was history. And after hearing Raditz's big revelation and story, Raditz sits in deep thought while a mind-blown Goku eventually responds, Wow! So that's how it happened. Just like that, really. As soon as you met her. That took me and Chi Chi years to do. And you flew off straight after without even letting her know? So you haven't even seen her for two decades now. Damn Reddit, you really are a dog. <laughs> I thought Krillin was bad, but you're a bigger player, ain't you big bro? Immediately causing Raditz to become embarrassed with a crimson red hot flush as he yells back SHUT UP Kakarot! No! I am not like whoever this Krillin is! I was in love! I just... I just had my orders! And a Saiyan always follows through! Goku however just disregarding his elder brother continues with a confused face Hmm, but there's still some things about your story that don't really make sense or add up. So, after you came and found me, we both ended up dying. So how would you then find out you had a son? You ended up in hell! With Raditz then folding his arms and responding as he thinks back, Well, this was a while ago, but some time after I had settled in, while wandering hell with Nappa, I came across a strange wizard. His name was Bibbidi. Apparently, he had been dead for thousands of years, a veteran in hell, and he quickly grew a liking to me due to my power. He said it reminded him of someone called Boo or whatever. But regardless, it was with his mystical powers I was able to be shown Narali once again. Naturally, after I died, I did think of her, and I wanted to check up. And briefly I saw her, but shockingly, she wasn't alone anymore. She was with a baby boy. A baby boy with a tail. And so, I immediately knew who the father was. He looked precious, healthy, and strong, just like his old man. <laughs> But this was all pointless at the time. Back then, I never knew of any Dragon Balls, so Eternal Hell was all I knew was in my future. After that day, I never even saw Bibidi again, so never got to check up. And after a while, my mind just allowed me to forget and block out that entire event that my son ever even existed. And so that's why, Kakarot, I called you wanted to know what you thought I should do. What would I even say to him after all these years? Goku having listened then thinks for a while replying, Hmm, well I'm glad you're asking me for advice on your son and not Narali. I don't think even I would know what to say to her if she's anything like Chi Chi. <laughs> but I don't think there's anything to think about when it comes to seeing your son or her. You're alive now, so you have no excuses. You have to see him. As for what to say, 
I think as long as she's told him who you are, it won't be a problem. Family is family after all. I still remember the day I met Goten for the first time. I spent seven years in Otherworld training, so by the time I'd seen him, he was already a strong little guy. But you know, there was nothing awkward about it. He knew who I was and I knew who he was straight away. And the first thing we did was hug. I'm sure it'll be the same for you too, Raditz, so don't sweat it. And with that, Raditz then stands up confidently with a smile as he proclaims, Well, that's that then! I'm going to see them! You're right, Kakarot! I have no excuses! And if you can meet your son after seven years, then so too can I after twenty. I'm leaving now! I can still remember the location like it was yesterday. I could never forget the place I first met her. But now, what are you going to be doing, Kakarot? Do you... do you want to join me, brother? See your very first nephew, <laughs> And in response to this, Goku then just replies with his hand behind his head saying, Well, I was going to go King Kai's to train some more, but after hearing so much about this Narali person, I've got to see her for myself. Besides, I bet this will be fun. I wonder what my first nephew will look like. You lead the way, Raditz. I'll be right behind you. And so Raditz and Goku then walk outside, where Raditz points in the distance claiming, The village should be in that direction. It won't take too long if we travel with some speed. There won't be any breaks, so if you need to do anything, do it now, Kakarot. To which Goku just replies, Nah, I'm good. Let's go. After that, the two fly off immediately leaving the rest of the Son family behind. After some time, Goku and Raditz are in the sky when Raditz spots down below the village he mentioned earlier, saying, Ah! Kakarot! There it is! It hasn't changed a bit! Let's land. Try not to make too much of a commotion. Like I said, they scare easily. The two then land, and as expected, the villagers are already shocked at their appearance. It seems this rural village has seldom ever seen an outsider, let alone aliens from another planet. Goku comments, Uh, you weren't kidding. They look terrified. With Raditz responding, Don't worry, let's just try and find Narali. The two Saiyans then begin walking through the village. All the while, the residents whisper and cower, Hey, Elder. Who are those guys? Are they going to cause trouble? Don't worry, son. Oob and his friend will protect us if they start anything. Raditz, growing tired of looking around and seeing no signs of his woman, then looks at Goku and says, This is going to be tougher than I thought, Kakarot. If only I could have sensed power levels back then, I'd be able to tell where she was now. Maybe... Maybe she left the village. Eventually though, Raditz notices an elder lady behind him. One he seems to recognize briefly from his visit last time. He mutters, Hey, wait a minute. He then quickly moves straight before the old lady who's understandably visibly shaken before asking, Hey lady, you seem familiar. Recognize me? I came here over 20 years ago and met a woman named Narali. You wouldn't happen to know where she is, would you? The woman just cowers for a moment, muttering, uh, uh, before instantly then screaming at the top of her voice, calling for help, leaving a bemused Raditz to try and calm her down. Whoa, whoa there, lady. I was just asking a question. I mean no harm, just relax. Slowly walking towards her in an effort to place her hand on her shoulder. But before he can get any further, <laughs> Raditz is suddenly kicked straight in the face, hard and with an intensity so great he is left momentarily disorientated. While the old lady meanwhile yells, boy! you finally came, about time. 
Whoa! Not bad! Goku, meanwhile, looks surprisingly excited as he watches at the young man's power and technique, commenting further. Damn! Who is that? He sent Raditz flying! That's impressive for an Earthling. Guess there's strong people all over the place. But while Goku is pleased, Raditz is sliding across the floor on his face, still reeling from the impact of the mysterious young man's kick. An infuriated Raditz just barely getting up, angrily mumbles, Why you? Who the hell was that? Since when did Earthlings become strong enough to wobble me? Goku now hearing his brother's words and now finally realizing Raditz was actually injured then says, Oh wow, Raditz, he made you bleed. That's really impressive. Yeah, I'm not sure who he is either, but do you need my help? <laughs> Your help? Not in a million years, Kakarot. I'm fine. It was just a lucky hit. I obviously must have lowered my power level down a little bit too much. That's what I get for trying to be nice. Puh! Then spitting onto the floor the blood that has just now formed in his mouth. Before continuing, Tch! I came here in peace, just looking for a certain woman. But fellow villager or not, whoever just hit me is about to be sent to the next dimension. Nobody attacks a Saiyan and lives! And suddenly, Raditz gets back onto his feet as his power level begins to slowly rise, shouting, Now come here, you! Clearly my time away from this planet has made you Earthlings forget the meaning of fear! Allow me to... Huh? There's no way... Could he... Those eyes! And standing there furious is a young brown man with the same yellow eyes Raditz had described of Narali. His body bulked up far more than any of the other villagers and quite curiously, a large tail behind him, which could only mean one thing about his origin. A new Saiyan has been discovered, the son of Raditz. And as he looks on at the two intruders who are unknowingly related to him, he speaks. Who are you and why have you come here? We are a poor village with nothing of use to you foreigners. Go back where you came from now, or do you feel like getting hit again? But Raditz unfazed by the threats and just shocked at the sight of the young man walks closer thinking to himself, There's no doubt about it, that tail and those eyes, this is Narali's son, this is my son. Trying not to give anything away just yet, Raditz cautiously then just asked the boy, Hey, hey kid, nice kick, you really got me. I'll tell you why we're here in a second, but first, mind telling me what your name is? And the mysterious boy, still angrily looking at Raditz then responds, Thanks for the compliment, but I could get that idea from the blood in your mouth. I don't really need to know why you're here, I just need you to leave. I shall tell you my name if that is all you want, but fail to go after this and my name will be the last thing you ever hear. My name is... Arge. So our story continues after Raditz and Goku travelled to find Raditz's past partner Narali and in return prematurely ran into their shared son, Arge, for the first time. The half-breed saying after revealing his name then continues his questioning, asking, So now you know my name. Are you going to tell me why you're here, or just leave? Pick one. There's no other options here, and my patience is running low. I'm much stronger than the others here, so underestimate me at your own peril. <coughs> A staggered Raditz, however, just looks unshot and responds, Urge! So that's your name? My son, uh, I mean, that's a good name. 
whoever raised you picked well. Could I perhaps meet them? I mean, maybe not your father, but could you bring me to your mother? I need to talk to her. Huh? An angered Arge, though, is immediately triggered by this stranger asking to see his own mother, and instantly gets into fighting stance, defensively replying, What did you just say? My mother? What business do you have with her? I thought I told you to leave, but now you're definitely dying here if you intended to mess with my family. I don't know who you two guys are, but you should have stayed home. Even if it costs me my life, I'll protect everyone in this village from invaders like you! Arj following this, then immediately begins powering up, tensing his muscles as he does so screaming, <laughs> his energy skyrocketing even higher than it was previously, as he continues, You should have listened to me when you had your chance! But now, you've outstayed your welcome. You're getting no closer to my mother! Meanwhile, Radix just looks on in surprise at how much energy is being generated by the young man, leading to him thinking to himself, Whoa! He's my son, alright! No earthling could have power like this! I don't even need a scouter to tell he's way stronger than I was at his age! But he needs to calm down! I didn't come here to fight! Damn it! At this rate, I'll never get to meet Narali again! Not exactly the best look to meet her after just beating up our son! <sighs> what do I do? However, Goku meanwhile, who is also witnessing Arj's sudden power change, looks on first with shock, but then soon transitions into a smile as he becomes impressed. Whoa! That's some key! Who is this guy? I can sense a great power inside him. I wonder how strong he really is. Hey Raditz, are you taking him on or am I? Can I call dibs? Which an annoyed Raditz quits back with, No one's taking anyone on! This is all just a big misunderstanding. And Raditz, following these comments, then places his arms out, trying to calm down the situation, saying, Listen, kid, I'm not here to cause you or your mother any trouble. I've come in peace. Just bring me to her, and she'll know who I am. I know this is confusing, but long story short, around 20 years ago, I slept with her and left the next morning. <laughs> But at the first hearing of Raditz's unthoughtful words, Arj's eyes suddenly opened wide in rage, yelling, WHAT?! HOW DARE YOU TALK ABOUT MY MOTHER LIKE THAT?! YOU'LL PAY, YOU INVADER! <laughs> and instantly triggered even further by his primal rage, Arj's power goes even further beyond. <laughs> Immediately then flying off in a rage, right at Raditz yelling, I'll make sure you never mention her again! DIE! WHAT?! While well, Raditz just looks on completely caught out, like a deer in headlights, as he continues to plead, Wait, wait! I didn't mean it like that! You fool! <laughs> but alas, none of Raditz's words are able to pass through the wall of anger the young Saiyan shows, and he is instantly punched across the face at full force before Arj then continues the assault, swarming Raditz like a beast, throwing multiple punches at full speed. Eventually, Raditz manages to cover himself and just barely defend himself from the barrage of attacks that seemingly won't stop, with Raditz commenting, This kid definitely packs a punch, but how do I stop this without hurting him? This is absurd. But Arj, realising he's no longer getting through, just gets angrier and angrier, increasing his strength further, screaming, You coward! Stop blocking and fight me! It's only a matter of time before I finish you! He's right! This is starting to hurt! I can't do this forever! This punk is really trying to kill me! His own father, damn it! I 
need to figure something out. I don't want to hurt my own son without even talking to him first. So this is what fatherhood is like. No wonder Bardock was never around. Who wants to deal with this? I was better off letting Narali raise him. That's enough! And suddenly, after saying this, Raditz immediately catches one of Arj's fists, immobilizing his attack there and then, before then looking at him straight in the eyes and yelling, Arj! Listen to me! Stop! I'm not fighting you! I came here to talk to you and your mother! If you can't listen, leave me be and I'll find her myself! But once again, the mention of his mother does nothing but provoke Arj further as he pulls back his free arm for another punch. STOP TALKING! <laughs> but this too is easily grabbed and stopped by Raditz. With both arms now grabbed by his father, Arj is left in deadlock with his father as Raditz tries once again to reason with him saying, <laughs> Finally! You're a fidgety one, aren't you? I can only imagine what you were like as a baby. Your strength is impressive, that's for sure. Not bad for a young say, I mean earthling. But you really need to learn to listen and control your anger for a second. Now that we're finally talking, let me just explain that I didn't come here to destroy your village or harm anyone here. I'm a friend. Not an enemy, trust me. I came here over 20 years ago and met the people here once already. You'll see. When your mother meets me again, she'll know who I am. After all, I know her well. <laughs> very, very well, in fact. <laughs> Not another word about my mother, you pervert! <laughs> Windows Raditz is making about his own mum, Arj powers up once again, his aura spewing out of him at such an intensity that Raditz soon is forced to go down to one knee, as he loses his grip against the power of Arj, with him muttering, His power? Where is this kid getting his energy from? With one eye closed, Raditz can barely look at his own son as the force of his aura blasts onto him. He continues, This is bad. His power level is getting out of hand. I'm losing my grip. Yeah! And just as Raditz feared the worst, it happens as Arj frees both of his fists, prematurely surprising an unsuspecting Raditz, who yells, Damn it! Here comes the fists again! But Arj this time opts for something else and immediately split kicks knocking Raditz's head back hard at point-blank range. <laughs> Sending the Saiyan flying at speed to crash land on a nearby mountain. Arj, noticing this, then jumps high into the air, before then pointing down at the hidden Raditz, shouting, I warned you! I told you to leave! You have no business here! and definitely none with my family. And now, you'll never leave. Your ashes will remain here forever. Just try and get up from this. And with that, his arms outstretched wide, Arj begins summoning an intense amount of energy, concentrating it within his body himself. Ah! The similarity to a certain other character's technique though doesn't go unnoticed by Goku, who comments, Hey, well would you look at that? That's Vegeta's technique. The final flash? It couldn't be. <laughs> this is the end of the road! Farewell and good riddance! <laughs> Instantly blasting off the mysterious Kibi right into the direction of the still missing in action, Raditz. The impact of course causes a massive explosion, reducing the entire mountain to nothing but rubble. 
Meanwhile, the aftermath of the explosion causes all of the remaining villagers to wince and guard themselves from the impact and debris, while an unfazed Goku just watches on with intrigue, saying, Hmm, it looked like the final flash, but that had nowhere near the same kind of power. Looks like this little guy still doesn't know how to control his key properly yet. Following the explosion, a pleased Arch stands above in the air with a cocky smile while panting from exhaustion, saying, <sighs> I did it. I protected the village all by myself. Master would be proud. I haven't been able to let off their attack properly before, but today, it came through. Unlucky, my friend, but you served your purpose as the perfect target practice for me. Still full of enthusiasm, Arjun looks back down at the smiling Goku, thinking craftily in his head, huh. and now there's only one left, the stupider looking one. He's probably even weaker, and I've still got plenty of energy. I've got this in the bag! Not so fast, punk. You're not done with me yet. <gasps> but suddenly, from right behind Arj, a familiar voice calls out to him. Slowly but surely, Arj turns his head to see who it is and begins muttering, No, no way. Ow! And standing there behind Arj as a Super Saiyan is Raditz. With an emotionless face staring down at Arj, he says, That was a lot of theatrics for such a weak attack, but you've definitely learned a few things while I've been away. This game ends here and now though. You can't beat me in this form. This is the true power of a Saiyan. A power you are destined to wield one day also. The power of a Super Saiyan. My power in this form is 50 times that of what it once was. You seemed to be pretty even of me earlier. So consider me now 50 times stronger than you to make things simpler. This battle is well and truly over. <coughs> 50 times? A taken aback Arj is then left in a panic state as he can't decipher whether Raditz is saying the truth or not, replying, There's... there's no way! You must take me for a fool! No one can get that much stronger so fast! You've changed your hair colour, but you're still not leaving here alive! Yeah! But as Arj punches at his regular speed, Raditz instantaneously vanishes. Huh? Appearing now right behind the confused Arj, with his arms folded, he continues, Now do you believe me? This is reality. Stop your meaningless threats and stand down. I wanted to talk, but I can get the information I want with force too, kid. And now borderline petrified Arj just mutters back, Ugh, his speed. He moved before I even got close. I can't let everyone down. If I let a guy this powerful stay in the village, who knows what he'll do? Who knows what he'll do to mother? But before Arj can even reattempt a new attack, Raditz has enough and swiftly knocks him from behind, shouting, hm, You never learn. Figures, you're just as hard headed as your old man. Sending Arch flying to a crash land on the ground below. With Raditz continuing, It couldn't be helped. This boy has guts. To think, he would still try and attack someone so clearly more powerful than him. He's a Saiyan, alright. Through and through. <laughs> Meanwhile, from below, still watching everything, Goku calls out, Whoa, Raditz! Finally fought back, eh? I was wondering when you were going to stop letting him win. But to think, he really made you turn into a Super Saiyan. That guy is good. Oh, he's great. I wonder if there's any other strong guys around him. But Raditz, still focused on his son and disregarding Goku's comments, looks down and says, It looks like Earthling or not, 
just like all Saiyans, he seems to only be able to talk with his fists. And that means he will only listen to and understand power. Just a little more showing of my dominance should be just what I need to get him to open his ears. And with that, Raditz begins powering up in his hand a powerful Kibi, saying, This should be just enough to injure him but keep him alive. I'm sorry, but you forced my hand, son. <laughs> Forming the energy into an even bigger ball before ultimately <laughs> launching it straight towards Arge. Arge, meanwhile, just barely struggles to get up from the previous attack, saying, All he did was tap me, but my whole body's in pain. But eventually, he looks up and he's shocked by what he sees above him. Ah! No! What is that? And coming straight towards the unsuspecting Arj is a massive energy ball. Bigger than anything he's ever seen before. One let out by a Super Saiyan. As Arj watches on helplessly, knowing there's nothing he can do to stop such power, he reflects. No. He was playing with me the whole time. Everybody was counting on me, but I've let them down. He closes his eyes, accepting his end, and continues one final time. I'm sorry, mother. I'm sorry, master. But just as the beam gets close to Arj, a mysterious figure appears and knocks him away with his one arm and from Arj, straight to Goku instead. But of course, without any hesitation or flinching, Goku with a smile stares the beam head on and brings out a single finger saying, Whoa, another strong guy? This might just get interesting. Let me get this out of the way first though. And instantly deflects Raditz's Super Saiyan attack with just that low finger, sending it flying behind him to cause a devastating explosion. But meanwhile with Arj, who realises quickly that he's still alive and been saved, looks up only to see a familiar silhouette blocking the sun. And he lets out, Huh? I'm... I'm alive! Wait, is that you? Master? Master Oob! You came! And standing there fiercely, Staring into the soul of Raditz, the invader who just attacked his pupil is Oob, the reincarnation of Kid Boo. Raditz, meanwhile, is left in a state of shock as he ponders briefly, What the? Who is that? Another one? He knocked my attack away like it was nothing. He couldn't be an Earthling. Don't tell me! He's mine too! But Raditz soon then has a closer look and notices the child's age and his lack of tail, continuing. No, he's way too young. It would be impossible for him to be mine, surely. Unless the women of Earth here have different reproductive cycles to the female Saiyans. No, that's unlikely given Kakarot's kids. Not to mention, he hasn't even got a tail like Arj. I don't know who he is, but that strength is not Earthling strength. Something, something isn't right here. What? He's coming up here to talk or to fight. I can't read his expression. But just as Raditz tries to watch him closer, Uber immediately shoots off in that direction with an emotionless face that leaves everything to the imagination. <laughs> But just as fast as he shut off, his speed allows him to instantaneously slam his fist through the solar plexus of Raditz, causing the Saiyan to cough out blood in pain. <coughs> uh, what power! While the shy Oob still remains completely silent. Yeah! Uh! Swiftly then maneuvering to kick Raditz from his backside, sending him flying to the ground in the crash landing. 
Raditz now bloodied and angered, tries his best to get up, grunting. This planet is full of freaks! Who are these guys? What kind of earthling overpowers a Super Saiyan? Just wait till I get my hands on you! But unbeknownst to Raditz, while he moans, Wu flips back and readies a powerful hill first kick, falling down at incredible speed. <gasps> Already?! Leaving Raditz shocked again as he cannot move in time to stop the attack. <laughs> but luckily, just in the nick of time, a familiar arm intervenes and blocks Oob's powerful kick. And standing there unfazed as the impact causes waves of debris to push on Arj and Raditz is Goku, who lets out, Sorry Raditz, I know you said not to help, but I think it's my turn now. I let you fight the other guy, but this one, this one's all mine. Goku looking up at the familiar young man then says, I thought I recognised this place. When Dende first showed me you were here, I totally forgot. But I knew inside I'd run into you one day myself. So, you must be Oob, right? Huh? which understandably shocks the young villager as he mutters back, How? How does he know who I am? So our story begins right after Goku unexpectedly intervened and stopped Oob's axe kick from finishing Raditz. Oob at this point is still confused by the fact this stranger Goku knew his name as he thinks, Huh? Who is this guy? How would he know my name? Before he then flips back into safety towards his student Arj, who shouts out in worry, Master, are you okay? Tell me if you'd like me to step in. The two of us together could take him with ease. But Oob is left stunned to the surprise of Arj, as Oob lets out, I gave it almost everything I had in that kick, and he stopped it with a smile. Arj! Who are these people? And why does he know my name? Arj, do you know these two or something? To which Goku with a smile who can hear everything responds, Don't worry Oob, I may be smiling, but I definitely felt that. Left a little sting. And that guy over there doesn't know us, but he will soon. After all, we're all family. <laughs> immediately triggering an angered and confused Arj again, as he says, Family? What is this guy saying? This one's just as nuts and crazy as the last one. Both of them are talking gibberish. These two must be under the influence of what the elders told us were called drugs. But besides that, there's a bigger problem here. If my eyes don't deceive me, this smiling idiot really blocked Master Oob's legendary axe kick without breaking a sweat. How? This guy is no ordinary man. He's on another level to the long-haired one. I can sense deep inside him a power that shouldn't be possible. I'm... I'm not sure if even Master Oob will be able to handle him alone. But as Arj watches on in fear and contemplation of Goku's hidden power, Raditz now wiping the blood off his face, eventually gets up, angrily saying, <laughs> Kakarot, what the hell do you think you're doing? I had that handled. I'm a Super Saiyan for God's sake. Didn't need your help to beat two kids, you know. Goku though, looking back at his brother with a smile, then responds, <laughs> really, Raditz? That didn't seem the case from my point of view. You know that kid you were just beaten by isn't no ordinary guy. He's as strong as a Super Saiyan 3 at least. You're lucky to be alive. What? That little boy is that strong? You're kidding me, Kakarot. Who the hell is he? Another Saiyan? Leading to Goku to then finally explain the origins of Oob to Raditz saying, 
Well, that kid over there used to be a monster even the gods feared. He used to be called Boo. A short, pink, angry, incredibly powerful guy that destroyed the Earth and almost the entire universe too in the past. He was so strong, not even me and Vegeta together could beat him. We had to revive the entire Earth and use every inch of the Earthling's power just to get rid of him. But when he did eventually die, I made a wish that he would come back one day as a good guy. And the result is that kid over there. You probably can't see it, but just looking at him, it's like going all the way back to that day. That's Kid Boo alright, and it looks like he's even stronger than before. He might even be able to match Blue now with a little training. <coughs> this unexpected story however completely leaves Raditz shocked as he responds, This kid beat Kakarot and Prince Vegeta? You've got to be kidding me! A pink monster? Why did I even bother coming back to this place? The guys here are even scarier than the ones down in hell! But Goku sensing his brother's unease then attempts to calm him down saying, But don't worry, like I said, he was brought back as a good guy. I don't think King Yemma would have messed up there. His power is monstrous, but I can sense he's nothing like Boo. That other guy though, I'm not so sure. I have no idea why he's so strong. It's a mystery, because he seems far beyond Krillin or Yamcha, and they actually spent their entire lives training. Pretty strange if you ask me, but at least he might be able to tell you where your son is. <laughs> Which understandably leaves Raditz near speechless as he lets out, You... you can't be serious Kakarot! Didn't you just tell him he's family? To which Goku deep in thought responds, Yeah, as in I'm from Earth. I consider everyone here family. That's why I protect the Earth with my life. But in all my years, I've never seen an Earthling that strong. It's so strange, and that he has that weird tail too. Crazy how he came here to find your son and ran into a guy like that instead. Hmm. Kakarot, you! You cannot be this stupid! I refuse to believe this! You wouldn't know where my son is, you imbecile! Huh? Why, Raditz? I bet if you ask him nicely, he'll tell you exactly where to find him. I mean, a saying is always going to stick out like a sore thumb, right? When Bulma first met me, she knew immediately I wasn't normal. <laughs> you idiot! That kid is my son! How can you have not caught on to that yet? Honestly, I need a blood test done! There is no way I'm related to someone as dumb as you, Kakarot! Leaving a belittled Goku just whispering, Oh, really? I don't see the resemblance if I'm honest. How can you tell? <laughs> For starters, he has a tail! You know, that thing all Saiyans are born with? The one your own son Gohan had when I took him away? And the one you used to have too? Use your brain for the love of God, please! Leaving an owl struck by realization Goku to yield and say, Oh, oh, now I got you. The tail, of course. Now I see it. No wonder he's so strong. Wow! <laughs> then turning to Arj and nonchalantly saying, Yep, now that you mention it, that anger had to come from somewhere. Sorry about that nephew, welcome to the Saiyan Club. <gasps> Is he talking to me? Leaving Arj triggered by these nonsensical words aimed yet again at him. He continues in his mind, Did... He just called me his nephew? And that word, Saiyan, what the hell is it? Why do they keep calling me one? This is getting on my nerves! But Raditz soon then puts his foot down and yells, C 
Calm down, Arge. He's right about your anger. Before then slowly walking towards his unknowing son. As he approaches though, the two villagers immediately proceed with caution, both getting into fighting stance as Arj yells out to Oob, Master, he's coming, prepare yourself. But Raditz, sensing the tension, immediately raises his hands in defeat, trying to calm the two, saying, Hey, both of you stop. For the last time, I don't want to fight either of you, especially you, Arj. I just want to talk and explain who we are. Give me a moment and this will all make sense. Raditz realizing that Oob is his son's master then turns his attention to him saying, Listen kid, Oob, that brat doesn't listen to me but for whatever reason he follows your every beck and call. Look into my eyes and see I haven't got any ill intent here. All I want to do is find a certain someone, and I need him to listen before that can happen. Listen, you want to know who that weirdo over there is, right? How he knows your name and seems happy to see you? Well, let's all settle down and I'll personally explain absolutely everything to you. With an awkwardly smiling Goku just saying, <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Anyone got some food though while we talk? I'm starving. Leaving an extremely agitated and uncomfortable Arge as he just ponders. What? What the hell is going on here? And so eventually, the four then sit down. One half looking tense and the other calm. With Raditz initiating. Well, let's begin then. Hey you! Yes, you, Arj. I'm going to be quick with this, since you seem to have inherited some major anger issues from somebody. Probably your mother. When I said I knew her, know that I wasn't trying to offend you or deceive you. Her name is Narali. She has yellow eyes like you and curly hair. I know her. I really do. But hearing this, Arj is surprisingly unfazed and unimpressed, responding, Huh, was that supposed to make me believe you? You guys already knew Master Oob's name despite him never having left the village. It's obvious you have some strange spying techniques, or just asked around the other villagers. Any one of them could have given you names or descriptions. I'm not buying this, old man. <laughs> As I thought before, this is just a waste of time. You're trying to trick us. For what? I don't know. We are a poor village. There's nothing here for you. No money, no food, and no women. Leave! For the last time, get out of here before Master Oob and I destroy you both. You have no idea the kind of power I have. You only had a taste. Now that Mars is here, I won't hold back. But Raditz, now standing up, just responds, You think I have no idea? Where do you think you got that power from, kid? Do you not even find it even remotely strange how you're so much stronger than all the others here? Bar Oob. What did you think? Because you drank your milk and did some push-ups? You'd end up stronger than every adult man in the village combined? Don't make me laugh. The reason you're so different is because you are different. You're one of us. And I've known that since the day you were born. Huh? One of you? What the hell do you mean? I look nothing like you two weirdos. Why do you keep both saying such strange things? And keep mentioning that word. Saiyan. Which Raditz now with a smile explains, Yes Sarge, when I say you are one of us, I mean to say you and I are not humans. We're aliens from outer space, originally sent here to destroy all life and sell what's left. What? An alien from space? Destroy all life? Shh. 
Shut up! You're lying again! No! I'm really not. You are a Saiyan, Arge! A half Saiyan. But still one nonetheless. Our genes seep through far greater than that of the humans. And as a result, you have every feature a Saiyan could ask for. From the monstrous power, to even that tail behind your back. You are part of the most feared warrior race in all of existence. Closer to a god than a mortal. We hail from the planet Vegeta. Ruled once by our then King Vegeta. We are a fighting race, born of incredible power. Strength many times over the people of this planet you are on now. Born with tails, the source of our great potential resides within it, allowing us to transform under a full moon to become an enormous great ape. A monster that multiplies our power tenfold instantly and allows us to dispatch of a planet's inhabitants with ease. From the moment we are born, we're sent to other planets with one purpose in mind to conquer the civilization in any way needed, either by total elimination or complete subjugation. But sometimes, there are spoils of war. And that can be the interbreeding of species. And with his hand now placed on Arge's shoulder, Raditz says, And you were the result of such a spoil, but not from war. I came here as an adult, looking for my brother, but along the way, met your Nerali. It was over 20 years ago now, but you were the spoils of love. You are half Saiyan and half human, Arge. You are the son of Nerali, and you are the son of me. My name is Raditz, and I am your father. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense! You did nothing with my mother! <laughs> but Arj, once again refusing to believe Raditz, brushes his arm away before attempting to attack his father once more. <laughs> but instantly, Arj feels an arm arrive to stop him, and it is none other than Oob to the surprise of both Arj and Raditz. As Arj mutters, M Master! What's the meaning of this? Oob then with a low tone then says, Calm down Arch, listen to him. When I hear his words, I can tell he isn't trying to lie to you. Master Chapa told me how to read a liar, and this guy isn't showing any signs. He may very well be telling the truth. Look behind him, haven't you noticed yet? before Oob then points straight to Raditz's tail, continuing. Look, you always wondered why you were the only one with a tail. You've never come across anyone else and you finally have. You have to consider every possibility, Arge. What this man is saying might be true. When I fought him earlier, I could sense a similarity in your energy. Arge, now slowly coming to a realization after hearing his master's words, then looks at his own hands, introspectively thinking, Similar energies? And he has a tail, just like me. Is it true? I'm. I'm an alien. I'm a Saiyan. But softening the mood a bit, Goku with a smile then walks over and interrupts. Hey man, I know exactly how you're feeling right now. Raditz was actually the one to break it to me, I was a Saiyan too. <laughs> and my reaction was just the same as yours. But it's better than you think being a Saiyan. And inside, I know you can probably tell he's telling the truth. There's no denying it. You're incredibly strong for your age. Way stronger than Raditz or I was at your age. When you get angry, your power grows stronger and stronger, and you power up by yelling. That's all pretty typical of our sayings. <laughs> I bet as a kid, you were way stronger than everyone else here in the village too, right? Maybe you always wondered why, but that's all come from being a Saiyan. 
I was the same. I was taking on entire armies when I was a kid. <laughs> and you should just see my youngest son Goten. He's half Saiyan and half human too. And he's already a Super Saiyan and just seven years old. Huh? There are others like me? But if you're telling me the reason I'm so strong is because I'm a Saiyan, how do you explain Master Rube? He was born after me and is way stronger than I am. And he has no tail. Are you going to tell me he's a Saiyan too by the same logic? But Goku then walks over to Oob and looks down at him with a smile and says, Well, no. Oob is a special case. One that came about kind of directly because of me. <laughs> you see, Oob is a human, but he's the reincarnation of a really strong warrior we fought a while ago. You wouldn't know him and he wasn't a good person. In fact, he was actually an evil monster summoned by a wizard. But his name was Boo, and he wielded incredible power. So much so, that if it wasn't for the combined effort of the entire Earth, we never would have beaten him. Some would say he was pure evil, but as a fighter, he was incredible. And just before he died, I made a wish. Usually, when we make wishes, we would collect special balls known as Dragon Balls and call forth a dragon. But this time, it was different. I just wished in my head to fight Boo again one day, but this time as a good guy. And some way, somehow, the judge of the dead in the afterlife, King Yemma, heard my voice and granted a reincarnation in the form of who we now know as Oob. <laughs> but Arj, hearing this tall tale, immediately face palms in anger, raising his fist, yelling, Special balls, dragons, and judges in the afterlife? <laughs> now I know you two are liars. You expect us to believe such a stupid story? You think my peaceful master is the reincarnation of pure evil? You're going to get it for saying that, you invader. Arj, wait. But as Arj's anger builds, it is instantly shut off as a curious oob mutters from behind. Boo. I feel... I feel like I know who you're talking about. Why is his name familiar to me? As Goku then walks up to oob and says, Because oob, Boo is you! I have a feeling the memories of him still live on within you. Maybe not in an obvious way, but I'm pretty sure a part of him is still there. Those moves you just pulled, for instance, you wouldn't believe how similar they were to Kid Boo's. It was like watching him all over again. <laughs> it's unmistakable. Hey, I know. How about I jog your memory? One of Boo's last memories, in fact. Let's have a spa, and I'll use a form that you're bound to remember. And just like that, Goku mysteriously began powering up, yelling, and as he does so, his hair grows out tremendously, turning from black to blonde, his muscles bulk up, and finally, his eyebrows disappear as his now green eyes stare into Oob's soul. Super Saiyan 3 Goku has returned to the scene, covered in a roaring aura as wind and debris blow everywhere from its power, as Goku says, How's this, Oob? We call this Super Saiyan 3. Don't get it confused with what you saw from Raditz. This is on a whole other level. Literally. Looking down at the young boy and saying, So, anything coming to you yet, Oob? Me and Boo spent a lot of time fighting while I was in this form. I could barely keep up with him. That's how strong he was. Oob, meanwhile, just watches on with a look of awe as he whispers, I... I was stronger than this? No way. Wait a minute. A flashback then suddenly comes to Oob 
as he sees a scene of Super Saiyan 3 Goku fighting Kid Buu in a strange location. He thinks to himself, That? That was me? And the other guy? He's there. So the pink one must be Buu. Goku now sensing something is coming back to Oob, then gets into fighting stance with a smile saying, Ha! Looks like it's finally coming back to you, eh Oob? More will become clear in the heat of battle, I'm sure. Come at me with everything you've got! And with that, the ground begins to shake as Oob yells, Ha! And begins concentrating more and more energy into his body. With a smile now on his face, he finally says, I don't know what this feeling is, but I feel like I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. I'm excited. I'll give it my all. Goku. So our story continues with Oob now readying himself in fighting stance in response to Goku's challenge to spar, who is now in his Super Saiyan 3 form. With Oob initially thinking, this is... This is what I've been waiting for my whole life! I'm ready, Goku! While well, surrounded by monstrous key, Goku replies with a smirk. Ha! That's quite a different tune to before, Oob. But I'd be careful what I wish for if I was you. Ha! Suddenly, with a slight yell, Goku raises his power up even more and continues. Alright, Oob. Ready when you are. I suggest attacking first. This form is no joke. I may look like Raditz right now, but I wouldn't judge a book by its cover. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to handle me the way you are right now. But an unbothered and geared up Oob just smiles and replies, Oh really? Let's test that. And then suddenly vanishes mid-sentence. <laughs> Leaving Goku shocked as he wanders in confusion. So... He knows how to vanish with super speed. Didn't expect these guys to know tricks like that living out here. But now where is he? He seems to know how to mask his key well too. Just like Boo. This is dangerous. Only he knows the terrain out here. He could come from any direction. I'll need to focus. Who knows how much of Boo's power he can really tap into. <laughs> But as Goku tries to focus, Wu prematurely then suddenly appears and lands a ferociously hard roundhouse kick. But it's blocked by Goku's arm at the last second. The impact is enormous though, and even with the support of two arms, Goku can sense the power behind it, commenting, Whoa! That was too close. That kick was insanely strong. My arm nearly broke there. Where is Wu getting this strength from? There's no way Raditz felt this and still stood up. While with a smirk, who thinks? This feeling. I feel stronger than ever fighting this guy. I need to keep going. Goku, meanwhile, still grimacing at the force of Oob's kick, then says, Not bad, Oob, but I wouldn't be smiling just yet. This fight isn't even close to over. Yeah! Before, in an instant, Goku swings his arm, throwing Oob off. Powering up in his arm, a ball of energy, simultaneously saying, Let's see you handle this. Brace yourself, Oob! Immediately blasting a powerful but controlled key blast at Oob as if only to test him. But to Goku's surprise, Oob places his hands together and fires back his own. Ha! Typically, a huge explosion then ensues blowing debris and dust particles everywhere. The aftermath of which is so strong and close to Goku that he uses both arms to cover himself from the impact. <sighs> well, that was unexpected. Damn, so on top of super speed, this one knows a good amount of key control too. It's not perfect for sure, but looks like I've got my work cut out for me when it comes to training him back to his old self. That even looks like a kid boo move. But once again, as Goku is deep in thought, Oob suddenly appears from within the smoke that was hiding his presence, causing Goku to yell, Huh? He's fast! <laughs> and without a word, Oob then punches Goku at full power, 
sending the long-haired Saiyan blind to the crash landing of a nearby mountain. Kakarot! Meanwhile, from below, watching with his son, Raditz looks on in comments. What? Did my eyes just deceive me? He even caught Kakarot with an attack! What is happening? Don't tell me! Even Kakarot can't beat this damn village brat! <laughs> but standing next to him with his eyes closed and a cocky smirk is Arge, folding his arms and saying, Village brat, you say? Serves you invaders right for underestimating our people. Master may not be a Saiyan, but you're in for a big shock if you think your little friend could lay a hand on him. He's my master for a reason, you know. But from within the rubble and smoke of the mountain, Goku as expected is far from beaten. Now with a dastardly smirk on his face as he begins. Ha! You know, that was good. Really good. Managed to get a kink out of my jaw with that. Thanks. I've been training in martial arts for years and years, and I haven't seen many people move as fast and as clean as you do. If I didn't know any better, I'd have thought you'd been training all these years too. But that can't be the case, can it? I bet this is just the remnants of Kid Buu's fighting abilities slowly coming out. Am I right, Oob? Are you starting to finally feel like your old self? Oob, meanwhile looking from above, taking in what Goku said, just responds. Hmm, maybe. I definitely feel something while fighting you, but I knew how to do all this before. I may not have had a master, but I had a great friend, student and rival in Arge. Since the day I was born, I've had him to battle, train with and hone our skills. We both taught each other a lot, and together, we learned all kinds of ways to use our energy, or ki as you call it. From flying, to pushing our ki out of our body, to power up and increase our strength momentarily. Me and Arge know a lot, but we're still learning as we go. I think we're both learning a lot just from meeting you two. Goku though, hearing this, immediately beams with a smile excitedly saying, Whoa, really? Just the two of you alone managed to get this far? That's incredible. You two might be geniuses, you know. Whatever this training is, it seems to be powerful. You'll have to show me some time. But now that I know you're not new to this, I don't need to hold back as much. Get ready, Oob. The real battle starts now. <laughs> A loud roar, Goku instantly transforms into his Super Saiyan God form, yelling, you did well against Super Saiyan 3, but what about when I go this far? Not even Kid Buu got to see this, so let's see what you can really do, Oob! What the? The transformation, of course, leaves Arch completely bamboozled, though, as both him and Oob have never seen anything like it, with Arch commenting first, What is this freak doing now? Did he call himself a god? While it nearly has shocked Oob remarks, that red hair? What is this? This aura, it's amazing. And his key, I can't even sense it anymore. But somehow, I know you're way stronger now. But Goku looking from below seriously says, So, are you just going to stand there, Oob? Don't get scared now. All of that was just a warm up. I can sense you've got a whole lot inside of you to give. So don't give up. <coughs> That was a warm-up, which of course momentarily alarms the young Oo, who at this point believes he gave everything he had into those last few attacks. For a moment, Super Saiyan God Goku and Oob stare blankly and silently at each other, one eager to see their opponent's next move, while the other stares petrified at the godly new presence they must now face. Goku understanding how the child feels then lessens the intensity of his stare and says, Oob, snap out of it. I know how you're feeling, but don't be afraid. You won't die. Just try your best and you'll be fine. If this is too much for you, just tell me though, and we'll stop, okay? But suddenly, Oob's demeanor changes entirely, as a freaky grin begins to grow uncontrollably, as a sly giggle can also be heard. 
But before long, Uber seen overflowing with excitement, yelling, Stop! Are you kidding? This is amazing! This is just what I've been waiting for all this time! I've never been more excited to fight! Finally, I might have found someone to test out that power with. Huh? But Goku, meanwhile, hearing this, is left puzzled, not only by the change in attitude, but also at Oob's final words. That power? What does he mean by that? <laughs> but Oob's excitement can hardly be contained as he immediately then flies in with a smile, just narrowly missing Goku with a punch before instantly turning around and blasting a barrage of key blasts while still smiling, and ironically, having a blast himself. This is Super Saiyan God Goku we're talking about, and Goku in response immediately knocks away each and every blast with just one hand and a disappointed face saying, Hmm, I thought that smile meant I was in for a challenge. These attacks feel even slower and weaker than before though, Oob. Bummer. Huh? Weaker? I'm kidding. What's going on? I'm fighting just as I was before. Yeah, I've gone from winning to not even being able to touch him. Is this... is this really the power of Saiyans? <coughs> for himself, Oob then jumps back to regain his composure, before immediately shooting up into the sky, before placing his two fingers together in a somewhat familiar fashion saying, Fine, you forced me to do this, Goku. You wanted me to give it everything I've got, so show me how you deal with this. Special Oob Cannon! Immediately firing a quite noticeably unoriginal move that instantly gets noticed by Goku who comments, Special Oob Cannon? Isn't that just Piccolo's move? Looks like he took on more of Boo's memories than he even knew. There's no way he could learn that by himself. And of course, as the Special Beam Cannon rushes towards Goku, he remains completely still. Smiling in fact thinking, this is great. I wonder if he knows any of mine or Vegeta's moves too. Before suddenly a massive explosion is seen, impacting directly on the flinchless Goku. Kakarot, no! Raditz of course seeing his brother get seemingly blown to pieces is left shot, yelling out, What? What have you done? Why didn't you move Kakarot? While an overjoyed and rejoicing Arj screams, yeah! That's the way, Master. Show these invaders who's boss. Not so tough now, are you, Father? Not a man alive could ever survive Master's legendary special Oob Cannon. And Oob, too up in the air, is left convinced of a smile that he has indeed finished off Goku for good, saying, <sighs> I did it. I really did it. It landed perfectly first time. Luckily, he didn't even move. Maybe it was overconfidence, or maybe just too fast for him. Either way, I've won this. <coughs> Wait a second! It can't be! But that look of confidence is soon shattered as Wu begins to recognize a certain silhouette appearing. A silhouette we can all tell from just the hair is most definitely Son Goku. Indeed, standing there as the smoke clears is Goku, smiling, arms folded and without even the slightest scratch. Just his aura alone has protected him as he looks up and says, Not bad, Oob. That was pretty cool. I'm sure Piccolo would have been pretty impressed. It seems whether you know it or not, you already know a lot of our moves. And that means you're going to unlock Kid Buu's potential within you in no time. All this training you've done with Arj has just amplified it too. You've got way more power, that's for sure. But what you're lacking in is technique. You didn't even release your key properly with that key blast. And that's why I didn't even need to move. To be honest, I actually didn't even feel a thing. What? You didn't feel anything? Oob hearing this, of course, is taken aback shocked that someone for the first time had even survived the attack first off, but also confused with the mention of the name Piccolo and Goku's manner of talking as he continues. I didn't release my key properly? What is this guy's deal? 
He's acting like a teacher, not a fighter. What does he want from me? But Goku, with a smile, just looks back and thinks to himself, I think it's just about time to see what he's really got inside him. In an absolute flash, Goku shoots off from the ground and instantaneously reaches a shocked Oob's face. <coughs> what the? While the Goku now with a beaming smile says, You see, Oob, when you know key control, you can move way faster too. I bet you couldn't even keep up with me there, could you? Go on, be honest. Which leaves Ooze practically stunned as he mutters, Uh, yeah? Before without warning, <laughs> Goku punches the young Ood suddenly across the face with what seems his full strength. Leaving Ood with a massive dent in his face as blood and spit splatter out uncontrollably with the shocked Oob only able to mutter, What? Why? But meanwhile, Goku with no empathy just carries on his random assault, kneeing Oob next right in the stomach. <laughs> Again, leaving Oob even more wide-eyed as more blood is coughed up from his internal bleeding, just now thinking, What? What power? This guy is on another level. But Goku now done with the physical attacks at least then yells down at the damaged Oob to get his attention saying, Oob, key control is essential for making the most of all your attacks. I'm lowering mine right now so that mine do less damage, but in the same way I can make them way stronger too. Oob hearing this slowly starts turning his back in pain and mutters, uh, what? Key control? Make them stronger? Before in one fell swoop, Goku yells, like this! Yeah! Slamming both his arms down at full power, right down on the back of the defenseless Oob. Shooting to the ground for a large explosion as a massive crater is left in his wake. Master Oob! Arge, meanwhile, watches on and is left panicking as his own master is brutally dismantled before him. But there isn't much time to take in what's happening before Goku places his hand in an iconic fashion and begins yelling, Ka -me -ha -me creating a massive bright ball of energy in his hands that eventually gets the attention of a completely broken Oob who's just barely on his knees and comments. Uh, what? What is that? Not knowing what was soon to come. <laughs> as Goku instantly then fires off a full power Kamehameha wave straight at Oob while in his Super Saiyan God form. Oob, who is still recovering, finds himself wide-eyed as he now senses the astonishing powers right before him. Muttering first. He can't be serious! Is he trying to kill me? Yelling in a mixture of fear and shock as even he can't believe Goku went this far. Using everything left in his body, Oob then forces himself up, groaning. Uh, this guy is so unpredictable. But if this lands on the ground, my whole village will be wiped out! Can't let that happen! And with all his might, Oob then stops momentarily with his hands, the Kamehameha Blast. His eyes close from the amount of strain and effort he's exerting, while his feet smash into the ground as the weight of Goku's Kamehameha pushes further and further. Goku quit it! Somehow, Oob finds the power within to keep his village protected, for now. But even he knows that this can't last forever, as now even the ground beneath him begins to break apart and split ways under the power of Goku's attack. Goku though has not yet finished his test and instead with a smile comments, impressed. Wow, not bad at all, Oob. But let's push this one step further. <laughs> Suddenly they're blasting a barrage of keyboards that find themselves absorbing into the Kamehameha Oob is already struggling with, increasing its size and the force even more that it weighs on the poor Oob. Ah! 
Oh, I can't handle anymore. I'm going, I'm going to lose. Boom! Meanwhile, leaving Arge completely fearful as he watches truly as his own master and childhood friend gets slowly crushed under the incredible power of this invader. Just hold on! There's no way I'm letting my master and Billy die while I watch like a coward! I'm coming, Oob! But just as soon as Arge makes his attempt to fly over, he feels a familiar hand grab onto his foot and stop him in his tracks. <gasps> you! And standing there stopping his son is none other than Raditz, who yells out, Stop, Arge! This is their fight, not yours! Don't dishonor Oob by having him be saved by his own student. Just how pathetic you think that'll look? Trust in Kakarot. He knows what he's doing. You wouldn't kill him. Arge hearing this and seemingly trusting in his father's words for the first time, then calms down and says, <laughs> Damn it. You better be sure. With this kind of power, I'd barely be able to do a thing anyway. But Oob... Master Oob can't handle this much longer either! As we then see an Oob who has been pushed down so much now, he has gone down to one knee and uses his own back now along with his arms just to keep the blast from hitting the ground. With him now starting to black out from the sheer pain and loss of energy, Oob finally says, Damn, what power. I just can't compete with this. Arch, I leave this all to you. Goodbye. And with an happy smile, he then closes his eyes. Finding himself now in the deep recesses and darkness of his inner mind, still eyes closed and thinking, so I guess it's over. I must have died, but I hope somehow things turned out all right. But hearing some noise from behind, Oob turns around thinking, Huh? What's going on? And standing there menacingly before him is a phantom of Kid Boo, staring at him deviously all the while giggling, as the disorientated Oob can only say, Hey, it's you. You're who I used to be, right? You're... Boo? Wow. You look a lot scarier in person. A lot bigger too. So this is where you were all along, huh? I guess when I died, you died too. I'm sorry. But the unintelligible creature just screams a mixture of animal noises in response, as if not impressed with Oob's apology. <laughs> Suddenly, Kid Boo speeds towards Oob, with his mouth wide open and in one gulp, swallows the entire body of Oob whole. <laughs> Sending a now ghostly looking Oob down a spiral of unknown, with Oob just quietly muttering, This... This feels just like... <laughs> As Oob's face suddenly gets back its consciousness and completely morphs, now with his eyebrows missing and pink pupils surrounded by black and a mysterious pink skin. With a far more bulked up body, the strange Oob yells, <laughs> He's the game off his knees and pushing the Kamehameha wave up, before without warning, Shooting <laughs> off from his hands his own key, that overpowers completely Goku's blocks, now standing straight up with his arms outstretched. Whoa! What's, what's happened to him? as even Goku watches in shock at the intense power coming from the child. And in just a nick of time, Goku dodges as his own Kamehameha shoots past just inches from his face as he comments, That was a close one. He pushed that back like it was nothing. Was he? Was he holding back this whole time? <sighs> but meanwhile on the ground, both father and son Raditz and Arj are left shell-shot at what they are witnessing, with Raditz saying, What? What now? What is up with you people on this planet? He doesn't even look human anymore. As Arj comments, Not human? You got that right. 
Master Oob, are you still even there? <laughs> As finally, Margin Oob has finally been born in the Dragon Ball Super GR universe. A power of unknown limits, and whether friend or foe is still yet to be found out.